Health and healing. Health means different things to different people. What it means to be healthy, if the question was asked, some would say being healthy means that I feel good. I feel healthy. I'm not overweight. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I eat well. I sleep well. I exercise. So we take that as a means of being healthy. But health is so much more than that, isn't it? So much more. There was a friend of mine that I hadn't seen for many years, and we sat together at lunch and renewed our friendship that I hadn't seen for some time. Two days later, he was gone. Two, and he looked healthy. I mean, everything about me, just looking at him, he looked good. I even told him, man, you look great. And he said, you look great, and blah, 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 blah. You know how you tell people that when you meet him. No. But he was gone. So the question is, was he healthy when he was sitting next to me that day? There's a saying that healthy people don't get sick, but sick people get everything. That when you become sick, and sick is not necessarily a physical condition, sickness is a state of being. When you start getting one thing, what happens? You start getting everything. You notice one pill leads to another pill, another pill to another pill, and another doctor and another specialist. And before you know it, you have reached this model of sickness. And how did you get here? A state of unhealth. You become unhealthy. So I want to give you the definition of what is health. I want you to read this on the screen with me. What is health? Health is a state of complete physical, mental, social, and spiritual well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Now, first point, first point I want to make here today is health is not simply the absence of illness. It's not simply the absence of illness. Real health, real health is the will to overcome every adversity and to allow every circumstance, even your worst ones, to be a springboard toward improvement. Once again, it's the will to allow every adversity, even your worst circumstances, to be a springboard toward improvement. That means that whenever something comes, it's an opportunity for you to improve some area of your life. Every adversity comes to teach you something, to show you something, to allow you to be better in some kind of way. Every adversity. We have to face it as the challenge that it really is. Don't run from it. Learn from it. So we're so prone to want to run from every circumstance and every situation that seems to be adversarial. I don't like this. I don't want this. I don't need this. And some things we need, they have been prepared for you so that you can learn from this and grow and become a better person learning the lessons that you need to learn. Because life is a classroom, isn't it? Life is a classroom. And if you don't learn the lesson, you'll repeat what? The class. And some of us are repeating the class because we're not learning the lesson. You cram for exams, you know how you cram for exams? And as soon as you get through the exam, you forget the material. But that's not conducive with life. You're meant to get understanding. Wisdom is a principal thing, but in all that getting, get understanding. If you failed and struggled with Algebra 1, you're going to struggle with Algebra 2. Because all the principles that you're supposed to learn from yesterday, you're meant to apply tomorrow. Today was meant to teach you something so that you could be better prepared for the adversities and the situations that's going to come tomorrow. Everything that you go through is going to be on the test. The things I'm sharing with you now is going to be on the test. We can't just take some notes some of the time. We've got to be taking note of everything that comes and knows at some point this is going to be on the test. When that big trial calls life. Amen. Amen. So health is not just physical. It's said that mental, social and spiritual well-being Physical. Now, how many people believe they would be healthier if you worked out? Would you be healthier? Raise your hand if you think you'd be healthier if you worked out. Or if you work out, would you be healthier if you worked out more? I think everybody agrees with that, right? But it's not easy to work out all the time, is it? We know that it would be the right thing to do, but working out is uncomfortable. You've got to get up early in the morning. It's stressful. 
You know, I, I had one point that I was going to run around the block 10 times before I had breakfast. And I, I did it a few, a few times. I ran around the block 10 times. And when I finished, I put the block, block back under the bed. Uh. <laughs> but you have to have health principles. What are you going to do? What are you going to stand on to prove that you're going to be healthy at all times? You can stand. You can walk. You can do your exercises every morning. You're not unhealthy because of your physical capabilities. Everybody looks like walked in. Some may be a little bit slower than others, but everybody walked in. So walking is one form of exercise, isn't it? You can walk more. If you sat in that chair and you gotta get out of that chair, you can sit and stand. That's called squats, right? Just sit and stand a few times. That's exercise. And here's a great exercise when you get home. You have a dining table. Sit at your dining table right in front, sit feet flat on the floor. Sit erect and push away from the table. <laughs> great exercise, huh? Pushing away from the table. Wow, never thought about that one, Pastor. I told you you'd learn some things if you stick around. Mentally, you're supposed to learn physically. Your health is measured by your physical ability, but also mentally. Your health reflects your state of mind. Do you believe that? Yes. Your health reflects your state of mind. Your will, your emotions, your habits, things that happen in your life will reflect ultimately in your health. The older you get, the more you reflect your, inter your inner state of being. Is that so? You see people that can glow as you age. You know, some people get the age, it looks like every frustration, every worry, it wears on their face. If you're happy and you know it, tell your face. <laughs> Nobody should have to struggle all the time. Learn to have a, a disposition, it shouldn't just be outside, it should be the inner glow. When you look at a person that's healthy, they're healthy from the inside out. Health is not the reflection that you see in the mirror. Health is a reflection of your inner health, your inner being. When you're healthy on the inside, it begins to reflect on the outside. A made up mind is like a made up bed, right? When you get up in the morning, the first thing you should do is make up your bed, right? When you were kids, your parents said, you make up, make up your bed. Because when you get up in the morning, and if you don't make up your bed, and you drag and you go back, you look at that bed, I'm going to lay down just a few more minutes, right? And when you lay down for another half hour or so, but when you make up your bed, that means what? Sleep time is over. Your bed is made up. You're not going to go back there. It's done. You've made up your bed. When you've made up your mind, that means you've set a course. There's no turning back. And the reason why we're unhealthy mentally because we have not made up our minds on what we want. We've not chosen a direction or a course and stayed true to that course. We have a wavering course. We'll do this unless something better comes along. I will do this certain days or unless it becomes too difficult. But when you set a course and make up your mind, you're going to accomplish something, it gets done. Amen. Right? When you make up your mind, you will find a way. When your mind is not made up, you'll find an excuse. It's a choice. Do you find a way or do you find an excuse? It goes back to a made up mind. So health is physical, health is mental. Health is also social. It's who you hang around with, right? You hang around with dogs, you're gonna end up with fleas, right? You hang around with lazy people, you'll end up being lazy. It's not the people, it's who you hang around with sometimes, the social behavior that affects you. Association breeds assimilation. Secondhand smoke, right? You don't smoke, but if you're around secondhand smoke long enough, what happens? It starts to affect your health. And studies have been showing that secondhand smoke is worse than firsthand smoke. It's association. When you're around people that are healthy, you will become healthy. Secondhand smoke is like secondhand laziness. If you're around lazy people, eventually you will become lazy. You start in a habit of people that you're around. You want to become healthy? Get around healthy people. You want to accomplish things? Get around achievers. 
people that are going somewhere, people that are going where maybe you want to go. Create an environment that allows you to advance, to advance. Spiritually, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, all kind of blessings are outlined for us. If you would follow and diligently abide by the word of God, all of these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. All of these, you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. You'll be above and not beneath. You'll be a lender and not a borrower. You'll be blessed going out and blessed coming in. Promises are given to us if we are diligent and obey God's word. That's simple, seeming. Just do what God's word says. But spiritually, if you are not healthy spiritually, you will miss the blessing. How many people have slept through the blessing? You would know because you were asleep. But God's trying to bless us, and we have slept through the blessing sometime. You were meant to be somewhere, but, oh, you were so tired. I just couldn't make it. And you miss the blessing. When God blesses us, it's never convenient. The blessing is oftentimes out of our way. It's beyond something we really want to do. But that's where faith comes in. Why would you go out and help somebody, then there's no way that you're going to get anything back. Why would you do something and there's no redeeming value? I'm going to do this. Why? I don't understand why I've got to do this. But that's God. He puts us beyond ourselves. So that we have to contend with ourselves for the blessing. So who blocks our blessing? It's not God. We have many times blocked our own blessing because we've got in our own way. Because we've leaned on our own what? Understanding. we Reason it out our way, and we've told God how to work it, how it's going to work. And God says, trust the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, right? In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall do what? Direct your paths. He'll direct your paths. Simply put, the essence of health is a constant renewal and renewal. Re re <laughs> Thank you. A rejuvenation of life, renewing, constantly renew, renewing, rejuvenating, being better. Seeing every opportunity, every day is an opportunity to get better. Something you can do today that can make you better. This week, what are you going to do to become better? In some way, strive to make a mark, a bitch mark on how you're going to do something this week that's going to be better. And if you just keep doing every week and applying something better and better, over time, all of that better adds up to something. But it starts with one single step. One thing adds to another and another. And only God knows what's being formed. But you just keep doing the best that you can. And do not become weary at well-doing, but in your season. And God has a season for every one of us. He has a season. Your season is coming. Your due season is coming. But he says, do not become weary and do not faint. Because when you're doing good, it's easy to give up on the journey because you do not see what you want to see. But it's not your season. It's God's season. It's not your timing. It's God's timing. He knows when you need it and he knows when it's best and when you're ready to receive it. You can get something too soon, and it's just as bad as having too little too late. God can give you something right now, and if you can't handle it, you will waste it. So God's waiting for you to prepare yourself to receive. Lottery winners, within a five-year span, most lottery winners are broke. Did you know that? Most lottery winners are broke within a... Ten million, how can you waste $10 million? How can you... But they're broke in less than five years. Then they were praying about, Lord, just give me the lottery. That's what we want. But if you're not able to handle what you have now, you won't handle the blessing that God has for you. God said, what are you doing with what I've already given you? We're praying for more, but you're not being a good steward over what God's already given you. Are you being a blessing with what God's given you? Because if you're not blessed with little, you will not be blessed with much. Kids break toys, whether it's cheap toys or expensive toys. 
If it happens to break things, you're just going to break them. Why give you an iPhone, whatever, when you're going to break the little bit of flip phone? If you're in the habit of breaking something, you'll break it whether it's expensive or cheap. It's just your nature. So God says when you can handle the little, it shows me that you can handle the much. But what are you doing with the little that God's giving us? Do you want to be well? Now, Jesus saw this man at the pool. There was one certain man that had been at this pool for 38 years. Imagine being lame for 38 years. They were at this place, this gate at Bethesda, five porches, and there were all kind of sick and lame people there, all kind of sicknesses, and they're waiting for the stirring of the water. And the first one to rush down and get into the water would be healed. This man had been there for 38 years years. That's waiting a long time for a miracle, isn't it? So here's what Jesus said. Verse number six. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he was already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? That's a simple, direct question, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to be made well? What would you say? Yes, Jesus, I want to be made well. That's a simple question. Have you ever asked somebody what time it is and they told you how to make a clock? <laughs> you ask them something simple and they go on and on. I just ask you, all I ask you, you know, and you know you want to be around them sometimes. Because here they come. Oh, here come. You don't want to be that person. You're not that person, are you? Yes. But <laughs> you want a direct answer. You ask somebody something. Look, I, gotta, I don't have time. I'm just going to ask you something. But they can't answer. They cannot answer a yes or no. This man had a problem. Do you want to be made well? The man responded. This is the sick man. The sick man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus is like, I just asked you if you want to be made well. You're talking about nobody putting you in the pool. You're saying about that. 38 years, do you want to be well? 38 years. But you can't say that to people. People say you're mean. Do you want to be well? So Jesus is like, listen. That's what we do. We listen politely. Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. And every time I try to come, somebody goes before me. So I've been sick for 38 years. And then this is happening. Plus my feet are swelling. And all of this, somebody stole my stuff over here. Plus I'm hungry. And the food around here is terrible. And plus, do you know what day it is? Because I know, I'm, I think I, it just goes on. Do you want to be made well? And that's what Jesus is asking us. Do you want to be well? Because if he's the healer and you believe that he's the healer and Jesus is right there in front of him, if Jesus is the healer, then why do we have to go everywhere else to get well? Why can't we go directly to Jesus? Why do we have to have an HMO, a PPO, and all those other O's? <laughs> Why can't we go directly to Jesus? Because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you are sick, he says, a heavy burden, come to me and I will give you rest. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Why can't we stand on the word of God? If his word says that you are well, and not sick, then why could you say then by God's word? He says, by his stripes I am healed. Why can't we stand on that word? Why is it we could believe every doctor? Well, not every doctor, may believe what everybody says. But we can't believe God's word. Do you want to be made well? We run all over and spend all kinds of money, take everything they tell us to take, and get not better, but get worse. The woman that had the issue of blood that came to Jesus. The Bible says that she had this issue of blood for 18 years, bleeding. And she went to all kind of physicians, all kind of practitioners. And she, she had gotten not better, but she got worse. And the Bible says she had spent everything that she had. Then she heard about Jesus. And, but she had enough faith. This is this. Here's what she said. If I can just get to Jesus, I know that I will be made whole. How can you believe, after, you, after everything else has failed, how can you have enough faith to still believe in Jesus? 
But as she approached Jesus, she kept saying to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Now here's a person who's weakened. After 30 years of bleeding, you're going to be weak. You're going to be anemic. But she's just saying, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know. I don't have him to examine me. I don't have to have an appointment. If I can just get close enough to Jesus to touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be made well. That's faith, isn't it? She spoke her healing into existence. She didn't say, well, I get that. I hope that Jesus can do it. I, I don't know what he's going to do, but I hope it works. I mean, I, I've tried everything else. I'll try him too. She knew. See, when your no knows, not that you're thinking about it and hoping and praying and worried and anxiety, but when you know that Jesus Christ is your healing, he is your savior, he is your grace, he was sent here to heal us, we can stand on that word. And when she got close enough, she kept saying, if I could just touch the him. Didn't even have to touch him. He didn't even have to stop and examine her. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And what happened? Exactly what she said. Exactly. What are you speaking? Are you speaking life? Or are you speaking death? Are you talking about your condition to everybody that will hear you? Are you talking about every ache and pain and how nobody knows the trouble you've seen? Are you talking about a savior who can heal everything, cure every disease? A savior who said that I've sent my word and healed you already. Do you believe in the mountain? Or do you believe in the one who made the mountain? Because if you believe in Jesus, you can say to the mountain, get out of the way and it shall be moved. And the Bible says nothing you say, nothing you say would be impossible for you. So life and death is in what? What you're saying. She kept saying it. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. And when she just touched the hem of his garment, a self-fulfilling prophecy, what she spoke happened. She spoke it. And here's what happened. Jesus, now imagine, you touch the hem of somebody's garment, and Jesus turned around. The Bible said he felt power go away from him. It was just a hem of his garment. That's some faith, isn't it? That you can move Jesus with just, just enough faith, just speaking, just believing God and holding out. He said, that's some, I got to give you what you're believing for. That's power. Standing on every word. And the Bible says he turned around. He says, who touched me? Now, there was a crowd of people all around you. People touch, everywhere touching Jesus. He says, no, but somebody touched me. He means that somebody had the faith that others did not have. And when you got that kind of faith that can penetrate and everybody else is praying, but your faith is going, you believing and all you know is Jesus. And you're standing out and holding out. She touched his garment and she was immediately made whole. And Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? You know, I don't know the last time you really touched Jesus. Sometimes I pray, and I'm not sure if my prayer has touched Jesus. Because I got so many things I'm thinking about. You ever get too busy? You got so many things on your mind. And you pray before going to bed. If you pray, and I hope you do pray before you go to bed, you're on your knees and you pray. And you get in bed. If you say, did I pray? You don't know if you really prayed. See, when you touch Jesus with your prayer, something changes. If you've had a real serious diagnosis of something that really had you praying, you pray differently because of the severity of your condition. This woman has a severe condition and it needed severe faith. When you have a faith that is unwavering, and you know that Jesus is not just one of your answers. He is the only answer. He's not just one of your resources. He is the source of your blessing. That's faith. Not that I'm going to believe him, but at the same time, I'm going to go and talk to every other person out here and get other opinions. He is my source. This woman didn't have anybody else she talked to. She says, if I can just get to Jesus. And being a person that was bleeding, it was unlawful for her to be out there. So she could have been stoned or persecuted for getting out there, but she faced the persecution because she wanted to get to Jesus. Do you want to be made well? 
Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? You have grandparents, well, not, not great grandparents probably now, because grandparents now are starting to be younger and younger. Used to be grandparents in their 60s and 70s. Now grandma's like 40. Anyway, so great grandmas. They had every disease known to man, but the disease couldn't take them out. Isn't that right? Had gout and diabetes and high blood pressure, hypertension, congestive heart failure, cancer. Nothing could take them out. I remember going to church and they would have gout so bad, they just cut the whole shoe off. They cut the whole front of the shoe out. They're not going to keep going. They, they didn't go until they were ready to go. I heard one grandmother who was like 96 years old, and she says, I want all y'all to come together because next Tuesday I'm going home to be with the Lord. They said, Grandma, don't say that. Don't, you know, you're, doing, you're, you're doing better than some of us. She said, next Tuesday I'm going home to be with the Lord. So if y'all want to see me, y'all come together. That's, that's, that's knowing God, isn't it? She's not, in other words, she's not going until she's ready. Or maybe God gave her the revelation, I'm going to take you next Tuesday, tell everybody to come. But at any rate, they said, no, Grandma, you're not going to go. And she just kept standing on that. So they came together and got a gathering. And that Tuesday, she went home to be with the Lord at peace. Everybody around her. Is that the way to go? Yes. Not struggling and you're so medicated and You've got so much going on that you don't know anybody. You can't walk, can't see, can't hear, can't talk. You want to live healthfully. And the Bible promised us long life. And not just long life that you're around and you're feeble, but long life healthfully. Isn't that the way you want to live? Nobody wants to be a burden to those that, that, that you've got to, got to care for you, but you didn't take care of yourself. Now, because of your lack of caring for yourself, others have to be caring for you because you wouldn't do it on your own. Do you want to be made well? The last point, where's your hope? Proverbs 13 and 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, is a tree of life. And I'm going to share Romans chapter 15 while I'm here in verse number four. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The Bible gives us hope. It was written that as we read God's word, it gives us hope. You'll be down and God's word will pick you up. It'll give you hope. You don't know how blessed we are to have the word of God. Everybody that buys a new car, in the glove compartment of the new car is what? an owner's manual. It's there. And it tells you all about the specifications and the care and maintenance of that vehicle. Now, if you don't use an owner's manual and you just don't maintain it, don't change the oil, don't do what's supposed to, what's going to happen to the life of the vehicle? You're going to have a lot more repairs, isn't it, aren't there? A lot more repairs are going to happen because you do not maintain it properly. It's much less cost to maintain, maintain something than to consistently repair. A smart person maintains health. You're not constantly going in and having to be repaired, coming in whenever there's a problem. As a chiropractor, I'll see people that will try to get them on a maintenance schedule. You have a condition that's con, con, existing. So you need to maintain by coming in regularly and get adjustments. And they'll come for a while, then they won't maintain. And they'll come to the office. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I just coughed. <laughs> just coughed. Goodness, must have been some kind of cough. But now it takes a lot longer. And that missing days of work and the distress and discomfort that, that it costs because they simply do not maintain a steady maintenance schedule. The word of God was given to us as our manual, the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. This is your Bible. You are what it says you are. You can have what it says you can have. You can be what it says you can be. 
If the word of God says you're well, guess what? You stand on God's word. If the word of God made you a promise, you stand on the promise of God's word. If you can believe the doctor and you can go to your doctor's appointment without missing. Every time you have a doctor's appointment, you're there on time. You never miss a doctor's appointment. But you miss church. Where's your hope? If you can take every medication they give you without missing, but you don't read the word of God that gives you hope. Where is your hope? We should believe that God's word prevails over everything. In the next upcoming weeks, I'm going to share with you some amazing testimonies of people who had stage four cancer and Crohn's disease and serious debilitating conditions. And the doctors gave them a prognosis. They said, Doc, I understand what you're saying. But I've got a physician, a great physician. And I got to see what God has to say about this condition. Because God has a word about your condition. You've heard what they've had to say, but that's their report. God also has a report. And when you read God's report, whose report do you believe? You can't serve both. And the, and the testimony when I, it just blew my mind when I read about and was witnessing them sharing that they put aside what the doctor's report said. The doctor says, look, you got three months at best. I say, well, whatever I believe what God says, whatever God tells me, that's what I'm going to do. They've gone home and prayed and believed and going back to saying, what does God's word say about health? How does it tell me to live? What should I eat? What things should I change? And they started to abide by what God's <clears throat> word said. And one said that they had a, their, their numbers were like 280. And 280 was like really bad. And you should be zero. 280 was like extreme. They said they went home and they believed God's word. Doc says, look, you, in six weeks you'll be dead. In three weeks, they said they came back, they took the test shaking and nervous. It was 280 before. In three weeks it came back, it was over 300. What do you do? The doctor has told you that you're gonna die. You went home, believed God for three weeks. It was 280 when you left. You came back and now it's over 300. It's going the wrong direction, God. Maybe God's not hearing you. They went back, they believed God. They said, God, I believe your word to be true. I'm standing on your word. Your word said. And they kept believing and kept praying. They went back in another week, just one more week to test. Nervous again. They checked it. And this time it was 20. <laughs> Miracles are in here just like that. They went back. Two weeks later, it was zero. And they did a CAT scan, and all those tumors that they saw and all those things that they saw were completely normal, 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 normal. What does that do to your faith? Even as I'm just sharing with you, it's gotta affect you. Because it's truth. You see, we have options. Your doctor's not God. See, and I'm gonna share in three weeks. In three weeks, I'm gonna talk to you about Iatrogenesis and nosocomial infections, and it's going to make you think twice about this God that you believe, this doctor that you believe in. Because there's a lot of things that goes on that maybe you don't know about. And you're going to think, oh, doc, he, he hates, I don't hate anybody, I'm just sharing you the truth. And I don't want you to believe me. I want you to go back and read for yourself. Antibiotics, you take antibiotics, I'm going to talk to you about that. Infections and colds. Antidepressants, I'm going to talk about those. Because we believe a lot of those things are, are, is the cure-all. That's what God gives us to be able to cope with life. I need this to be able to cope. No, you've got a God. And if you believe him, you can cope with every situation that comes. But if you don't believe this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, then this is just be a history lesson, just philosophy. But if you stand on this and this is all that you know and all that you believe, it will perform on everything that you believe. Amen. Will you be made whole?